What is up YouTube, it's Jay-Z Bottom Lip. And today, this is a video that was recommended to me by a viewer or a fan. And the reason why I'm making this video is to help people to get better at fighting games or just Mortal Kombat in general. Today, we're gonna to talk about jump-ins and when to jump in on your opponent. There's also a couple reasons on why you would wanna jump in on your opponent. And the first one being to disrespect or challenge your opponent as if they don't know how to anti-air. Sometimes you don't wanna go into a game believing that your opponent knows how to play the game all the way to the fullest potential, which would be knowing how to anti-air, blow up gaps, and so on and so forth. Usually people start off with jump-ins. Can my opponent know how to anti-air? Especially if you don't know how to anti-air Johnny or even up block, flaws block Johnny. If you don't know how to do this and your first instinct is to stand poke against Johnny, even if it's his first time jumping and your first instinct is to anti-air with a stand poke, you're most likely going to lose. So it's very important to know a matchup, especially when and when not to anti-air. Any Johnny player will let you know that his best jump in will be jump kick. For whatever reason, I don't know why, but it's very strong, especially if you're anticipating a move rather than an actual jump in, especially if he's kind of close and he jumps over you. Your first instinct is to want to anti-air, but you have to up block it because he has a really, really good jump in. I'm not sure if it's because of the active frames. Um, we can actually check really quick. We'll see um, together. Give me one second. Yeah. Actually, you can find out this way too. Only active for one frame. Oh, I see. Oh. Oh. That's insane. So, if you guys don't know, in Mortal Kombat 11, I just found out too. Uh, I just did it right now. But in Mortal Kombat 11, if you want to go back and look, uh, most of the active frames for jump-ins are usually like three or two. Um, in Mortal Kombat X, it was the same way. So it's kind of weird to see that an active frame of eight like this. Most of the time when your opponent get hit, like uh, like even if even if it whiffs, they're only, it's only active in the air for like three frames, right? Essentially making it a little like, I guess harder to anti-air or not anti-air, but to like punish if even if it whiffs. Um, I'm not sure, but anytime that it has more active frames, it makes it a little harder for it to, you know, to punish it because you're anticipating an animation and sometimes the animation is a little longer than expected. But I don't want to spend too much time on uh, Johnny, but I also want to let you know that yes, the first type of, the, the first type of understanding how to jump in on your opponent would be to disrespect or challenge him to see if he knows how to anti-air. Um, you don't have to play as Johnny. You can play as any other character. Now, the real important part about disrespecting your opponent is not making it too obvious on when you want to jump in. Let's make that very clear. Most of the time, it's very good to jump in at a range like right here. If you do want to jump in from a range right here, this is also a good jump in as well. But when you start jumping in from here, like if you start jumping in like this, you got to be very careful because you're dashing in, jumping in, and it's more there's more frames where I can pay attention to what you want to do. But if you just jump like this, it makes it very hard to see if you jump in. It makes it it gives me less time to actually react to how I want to punish you or what button I need to go against, especially against Johnny. Um, if you want, I'm pretty sure there's videos out there. Um, I can even do a video on me playing Johnny and jumping all over the place and watching people trying to anti this character. It's insane how how good his jumping is. Also, I wanted to show you guys uh, what his jump in looks like and why it's so good. And keep in mind, he does get a full combo off this if you do mess your anti -air. Now, also, I want to let you guys know that there is a few characters that have unique anti-airs. Not everybody has a stand poke. Some of them have down pokes. So, for an example, right, if I wanted to, I can use this to punish him with. But it's only, it's only, it's only with certain characters. So just keep that in mind, especially when you're using whatever character it is that you like. These type of jump ins were jump ins we talked about or kind of talked about when we were uh, explaining Oki. Now these are jump ins that you are guaranteed off of Oki. So basically, sometimes when you get Oki, you're plus. So you're guaranteed a jump in. Sometimes you're guaranteed a setup, which would be like a portal with Quan Chi. Uh, it could be anything in, in, in particular. Sometimes you can guarantee a uh, uh, maybe even a sector missile 
into a jump in or a jump cross up or so on and so forth. So with this character and Tanya, you get this one right here, which allows you to get a free jump in. With Liu Kang, you get a free jump in when you do strings like this. Uh, that's guaranteed. See how it says active for uh, 42 hits? And then you can go for mix again. Since we are uh, using Tanya, we also can use her for this example as well. I wanted to use Shang Tsung, but it still applies to Shang Tsung as well, if you know what I'm talking about. So basically, this type of jump in is to bait your opponent to thinking that you're going to completely jump in. And you're baiting them to try to do a stand poke, and then you punish them with a fireball. So it looks something like this in particular. You start from here, jump in, and then you would consider them to think that you're going to jump in. They get hit by that, you get a full combo. Another one that a lot of people used to do in Mortal Kombat 11, especially with Jackie, would be a jump with a button into a special move. where It would look like something like this. And then you would do an anti -air. And it would catch a lot of people, actually, believe it or not. The next type of jump in is the jump in that closed the gap or just, you know, closes the space between you and your opponent so you can get in a little closer. I use this uh, two characters for an example, because the only way this matchup is any playable is if you're playing Sub-Zero with Rain, because the, the bubble that he has it negates what Kenshi can do or it doesn't negate I'm sorry it doesn't negate the fact that he has an overhead move that kind of hits you so I'll, if I wanted to do this that's the far one okay that's the far one sorry okay sorry, <laughs> sorry. so if I wanted to do this 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 still hits me as you can see see so there's two times you can jump you can jump it like if you think it's coming you can jump it obviously and this is where timing comes in play where you can jump in if you believe that your opponent's going to do it again also keep in mind that he can bait you so for an example right um let's say i did this and then i jumped forward right he also can anti-air you with this Back one, back to his back, a uh, very good anti, and that combos for whatever reason. So if he just wanted to, he can do this and then go back to zoning. Me. That's if you don't jump right away. Most of the time, people don't expect you to jump again, but we'll give you a slight second again. And if you do jump again, then you get hit by this, and then it can start getting a little ugly into things like this. And then you know you get mixed from there. So be very careful about jumping in. Also, another thing you can do when you're trying to close the gap on an opponent is that you can jump in and do things like this because a lot of times people will try to walk in on you because they're like okay you walked in but then when you start playing at a higher level people start beating and then you get blown up for it so again be very careful about the decision that you make especially when it comes to jumping in all right last but not least the one of our most <laughs> favorite type of you know jump-ins that we really don't want to do but we do it anyway is basically when you're fighting against a person that's zoning you very heavy it's knowing when to jump or not necessarily just knowing it's when you should jump would be jumping over fireballs but i use these two for an example because shao khan has no other way to get in he doesn't have a teleport he doesn't have much to get in he usually has to respect duck or even jump in if he decides to that's if he doesn't amplify them and that's also if he can clear his fireballs so in this one he has to be very patient but if you decide to jump in it depends on where if you are full screen from here you do not necessarily want to jump in to get to him you won't get you won't get there faster by jumping or just dashing um from here you get that far from here you do get a little farther but what i mean by that is that if he decides to throw them at the same time that you jump you get hit let's say you also get past the fireballs right let's see you jump over them right when he does this when he does this he can do that let's try it right so now this is something that you have to think about 
See how it hits me? So now you clear them, but now you have to play a little smarter and footsie because if you decide to get hit there, then it's just back to zone, right? So if, I recommend maybe jumping from this range if you do want to jump. I don't know why that whiff, but if you do decide to jump there, you can also jump from this range. I recommend jumping from this range, walking him down. And if he's jumping here, he's whiffing his, his low. He's doing this a couple times. And then you want to jump in. But even then, that becomes very hard. This is why I use this for this example. This is like one of those mashups where you necessarily don't want to jump in. You kind of want him to overextend, which would be like doing something to get you off of him, like slide or down back three, or for him to jump on you. Because at, at, at the end of the day, he does not want to play the game like you do. He wants to zone you. He wants to play you at a, a certain space. So when you put him in the corner, he's going to do something that causes him to get himself in harm's way. Now this matchup is very, very hard. I recommend just walking him down, like I said. And then sometimes you can even challenge him. You can dash all the way up into a poke. And then you may grab him, but a lot of people expect you to grab him. So you can also do things like, let's say if he wanted to zone you, right? You can hit him with this into an overhead. Most of the time it catches people. I recommend using something like a cameo that allows you to be safe. But I also use chameleon for this example, because if you're really dealing with zoning, you can always you can always use that or you can use her glow to, to get you out of harm's way. And then you can punish it. Which is kind of cool that they implemented in this game. But to be honest with you guys, and to be fair, uh, this character is very annoying when it comes to jumping. I do not recommend jumping against him at all. But if you do, do if you do decide to jump in, I recommend jumping from a range where you know it's going to connect. Not necessarily just creating like less space, but knowing that it's going to connect. Because the let the the least that you want to happen is that putting yourself in that rock paper scissors uh, situation where you have to guess down after you're jumping. So I recommend being very patient about that. Other than that, those are all the jump-ins that I can think of as far as in when I would jump in and all the other jump-ins that I have seen, especially playing different characters in different play styles. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Enjoy Jay's the bottom, look him up.